Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be doing one of my most requested videos on the channel and that's just going to be a day on the water fishing with me. Um, basically what we're going to do is just go out on the water and take you guys along like you'd be fishing in the back of the boat with me. We're going to show you what we're fishing, how we're fishing it, and basically just do a day on the water and break that down. You guys have asked a ton if I could do that kind of stuff, breaking down what I'm seeing on the water, the conditions I'm given, paying attention to my surroundings, and honestly just enjoying nature. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to spend a nice calm fall day of smallmouth fishing. I am the only boat on the lake today uh, or a river and I have it all to myself. It's a nice sunny day. It's actually extremely cold, but the sun is helping uh, and there's no wind at all. So right now we're going to get some rods out, uh, basically just kind of taking our time because we're the only boat out here. So no reason to rush. We're going to get some baits rigged up. Uh, probably going to start with my favorite being the finesse swim bait. You guys know I love that thing. I throw it a ton and it's caught me numerous bass uh, and it's probably one of my favorite ways to search for fish. I've actually only ever fished this area of the river one other time and it was in the middle of the summer so that information is probably irrelevant right now. So we're going to try and do everything we can to figure these fish out and kind of take you guys along with us and hopefully have an awesome day of smallmouth fishing. But we'll see how it goes. So let's get some rods rigged up and we'll meet you up on the front deck there. Okay, so we got all our rods rigged up. I got a couple over here that I think I might play around with once we find some fish. I got a bigger swim bait to try and get some bigger bites. And then the A-Rig, I would love to double or triple up on some fish when they're schooling this time of year. Sometimes you can actually do that and catch a, a lot of fish in a hurry. Uh, but we're gonna start with my little finesse swim bait my go-to what I always start with and then on this side I got some other stuff like blade baits and Ned rigs it is winter water temperatures like 46 degrees so it's pretty cold out um, and the water temp is dropping because it is so cold out so there's a chance that they're uh, not really gonna want to chase baits but we're gonna start with moving baits because there's a lot of water to cover and I can't do it with a Ned rig so we got to start with some moving baits first and see if we can find us some fish that we can work on and figure out what they really like today. But for right now, all I'm really doing is just reeling the swim bait as slow as I can and bouncing it along the bottom. And I'm gonna cover some water until I figure out where these fish wanna be. What I'm looking for is basically current break areas because these fish are not gonna wanna fight the current all day, um, especially all winter. They're gonna try and sit in an area where they can just basically hover and wait until spring when it's not as cold and they can start doing their deal again. Um, if you can see up on the bank up here, I have these giant boulders. Um, and a lot of times when you see those giant boulders on a hillside like that, and when the rest of the bank is all gravel, those slide out into the water. And I did side scan this, so I know that they are out there. Um, I can see a couple actually below the surface that are the size of the ones up on the bank there. So you have these giant boulders that kind of fall off the hillside and down into the water. And that creates the perfect current break because there's literally zero current behind those boulders. So it's a nice little spot that they can sit and hopefully ambush some bait fish. So we're gonna work in through here and up, up around the bend. This is a big bend that the current comes and hits. So you still want current because it is a river. So it needs to have current to make it natural for the fish, but you need something where that current is that those fish can sit behind and boulders are a perfect place for that. So we're gonna roll this thing through here and see if we can catch us a couple fish or try and figure them out. Hmm. No bites so far. Probably took only about 10 or 15 casts through there, but usually they'll jump on it pretty quick if they're there. Uh, before I start moving around a little bit, I am going to throw this Ned rig on this giant boulder just because I don't know if they're really not in the mood to move. Um, and if there is fish here, it feels right down there on the bottom. Like the, the rocks feel good. feels like it's supposed to. So if there are fish here and they do eat the Ned rig, or if they're really not in the mood to chase, I can probably determine that pretty quickly if I catch one on the Ned rig before I start moving along here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drag the Ned rig around just a little bit. It's that time of year where like, you gotta fish really slow to get them or get a lot of snags like that. The joys of Ned rig fishing. I will with these um, on the water videos, I'm, I'm gonna show everything like 
snags, catching fish, losing fish. I'm going to show all of it so you guys can see what it's really like fishing. Um, I know a lot of YouTube fishing, they cut out all the boring parts like this, but I think leaving that in could be interesting to kind of show what it's like fishing for a day on the water. I don't know if I'm bringing this to me or what. I can't get it off. A lot of times what I'll do is just cut my hand on the reel and there it goes. I think I actually got it back though. I did. Did I break the hook? No, I bent it out though. Just bend it back with a pair of pliers. We're just fun fishing. You also notice, um, while I am, I, like I mentioned, I use side scan to find this spot a little bit. Um, I can also use my eyes on this big boulder, but I use side scan to find this a little bit, but you'll notice if you've been watching the channel for a while, I usually have like five graphs, this whole boat decked out. I don't have that right now. I actually had another boat ordered before they warranty replaced this one. And all those graphs are with that boat. Um, and I got to go get those back before I can install them again on my boat. Jeez, a lot of rocks down there. Um, however, I've been toying around with the idea and I want to know what you guys think. So put it down in the comments below. Um, I've been fishing. That one actually broke off. So we'll talk about it while we're retying here. I've been fishing for a long time. I fished out of a lot of different types of boats, little boats, big boats, all kinds of stuff. Um, and this, I've been super fortunate to get this boat because of you guys and all of your support and how far I've come in my fishing career and YouTube. So I'm super grateful for that. But I also recognize that a lot of you guys probably fish out of smaller boats like I used to do. Um, I used to fish out of a 518, which is a smaller version of this. I had a 17 foot sprint bass boat was my first boat. Um, trying to think of what else that I've had. Don't tell me I left my Ned rigs at home. That would be a disaster. Where are they? Oh, there they are. That was almost not good. But I've been fishing out of so many boats over the course of my life, and especially for YouTube, it probably doesn't matter as much to have a super decked out boat like this. And I know a lot of people are actually getting, I don't want to say sick and I don't want to go on the, the train of people with the no live scope thing and all that kind of stuff. Like if I get a different boat, I'd still probably have live scope on it just so I can appeal to everybody. Um, but what I'm thinking about doing is actually either downsizing to like another 18 foot glass boat and trying to deck it out on a budget and try and show you that you can get a boat like this for maybe half the price and kind of really fish to the best of your abilities and compare with other people. Or my other option that I've actually been thinking about is getting an aluminum, um, going to find a, a budget aluminum boat, whether it's like an Express or a Ranger aluminum or a Lund or something like that, something that, um, is more affordable for most people's price range. And I know, I know that's still not gonna appeal to everybody. I know some people probably can't afford a boat at all or might fish out of a kayak, which I'm also debating getting a kayak and doing kayak videos as well. Um, but I think if I downsized my boat and just ran a boat with maybe like a single console graph and a, a bow graph, a, a smaller bow graph, what I used to do, like my last boat, I had two graphs on it. I had a 12 at the console and I had a nine on the front and that was it. And that's all I fished with. I didn't use live scope. I didn't use any of that stuff. Um, I didn't have it at the time. So for me to go to this, it was great. And I love fishing out of this, but I think I want to try and go back to my roots a little bit and appeal to people a little bit more. Um, especially all you guys. I mean, I know not everybody can afford a boat like this and I'm super grateful for everything you guys have done and all the support that I could afford a boat like this. Um, but that's not what this channel is about. My channel is about trying to teach everybody to catch more fish and how to do so. And to be honest, you can do a lot of it just looking with your eyeballs and using 2D sonar and side scan, which is pretty readily available for most people these days. So. I know that's a long way to go around to describe why, how I'm finding these fish. Like I know I talked about side scan and using my eyeballs a little bit looking for these things, uh, but I don't have graphs today. So 
that's why I'm doing that. And I'm thinking about going back that other direction on both. So let me know what you guys think down below if you'd like to see something like that. Maybe it'll be something we work out in the future here, but for now, let's figure out some fish. I wanna catch a couple today. Well, no luck, so we're gonna scoot up just a little bit more. Hardest part about this time of year is that, uh, people say it all the time, but like 90% of your fish are in 10% of the water. That's like late, late fall, early winter. It's, that's just the way it is. Like they don't really have many options on places to live mm, because especially like, so for this river, for example, the only place they can live are deep water areas that are gonna be a little bit warmer than the surface temperature as the water temps keep cooling down. And in those deep water areas, they have to have a current break. So you have to have those two things in one area. They also have to have food for them to survive. So you have to have all that stuff in one area for this fish to be there. Um, and it can be kind of hard to find that. Uh, and, and when you do find it, it's great because you can catch like a billion fish in a hurry because they're all right there. But sometimes you can go a long, long time throughout the day without catching a single fish just because that's the way it fishes that time of year. Um, and that's the way the fish are set up. So now that we're back into search mode here, we're gonna grab our swim bait again, because that's my favorite way of finding these dudes. Because if they're there, they're gonna jump on this thing, no matter how cold the water is, as long as you're keeping that on the bottom, they'll come get it. I mean, their number one forage in the river usually is some type of minnow or creek chub or sucker or all types of little bait fish that are down there, so. Fishing something that looks like a bait fish and fishing it slow enough, no matter how cold the water gets, they're still gonna eat it. Cause that's what they're eating anyway, whether you're putting that swim bait down there or not. I'm truly surprised there was not a fish right there because that rock is massive. There should have a thousand percent been a fish behind that thing. It's getting down towards that time of year up here in the Northeast where you can still fish, but some days you question, is it really worth it? Mostly for bass. Um, it, it, it can be a really tough day and freezing out and those fish, they just don't bite because that, that's not the way that they are made to exist. That's when I start fishing for other species. Um, I'll be doing some steelhead fishing this winter. Don't know if you guys want to see any of that, but I love steelhead fishing. Up on Lake Erie, um, fishing the creeks and stuff like that. It's a ton of fun. Catch a lot of big fish. And when the bass aren't biting, it's one way to get through the winter. Um, I've kind of timed it up now with my travel to Florida sometimes and spring fishing, fall fishing, everything like that. I can be fishing in Pennsylvania, I start about March, and I will fish March, late February, depending on the uh, the time of year, or the, the, the spring. It can get really warm early, and sometimes I'm fishing earlier. Sometimes it's like mid-March that I start, but usually around the beginning of March, I'll be starting. And um, I've got to the point where I can fish all the way through Christmas into January without ice fishing and fishing for like different species and stuff like that. So like steelhead, like I, I, I do a lot of that all the way through January, catch a lot of steelhead. It's worked on, oh, there's one. We got one. It was just laying on the bottom. He's a tiny little baby, but it's a start. As I was saying though, it's got me to the point where I can get through cabin fever pretty well and not have to worry about, uh, not have to worry about uh, going insane over the winter up here. That, that guy's tiny. I was expecting a much bigger fish than that, but he literally just ate that laying on the bottom out there. Not a bad little dude. Probably kind of hard to see there. Let me let me fix you guys. There you go. See that dude? Decent one. Bye, buddy. I'm just happy to catch a fish finally. Let's see if there's another one over there. 
Where there's one, there's more. Like I talked about, 90% of fish, 10% of the water. Most likely there's gonna be some more fish over there. I just gotta get it in front of them. So, let's see what we can do. I don't know what was different about that cast, but there's a fish there. Oh, I hope the wind doesn't start blowing. There's just like a gentle breeze starting. That would be miserable. I'm already freezing. I did bring gloves. I might have to put them on. Fishing in the shade doesn't help either, but this is the bank that the channel swings against, so I don't really have a choice. Why was that dude right there? Maybe he was out a little further. One fish right there. There's one on the blade bait. Oh, it's a big old smallie. Sweet. Come here, buddy. Blade bait, probably one of my favorite wintertime baits of all time for smallmouth bass. Like anytime that water gets below 45 degrees, this thing's on the deck of my boat. I could see them sitting in behind those rocks. They just wouldn't bite. Maybe we just gotta target them with the blade bait and pitch to them. We're gonna get some pliers on this guy, but nice one. Nice, nice, nice fish, finally. Hopefully they'll get a whole lot bigger than this, but I'm so happy we finally got one. Well, dim that up just a little bit. There you go. Nice little smallmouth. Probably two pounder. See ya, buddy. Let's see if we can get another one on that blade. Cause there is multiple fish sitting right on this rock right here. Pitch it right back in there. Let's see what we can do. He barely even bit that. I didn't even know I had one on until I had him halfway to the boat. Well, it's been tough. So it's time to make a little bit of a move. That's not this area anymore. Let's see how that goes. Try something different. Not necessarily different, but just different area. Because this spot is trash. It's not very good. Um, so we're gonna make a run down the river. Let's see what we can find down there. Maybe find some more rocks, maybe just some more fish. We'll meet you down there. There we go. Got one, finally. It feels giant. Why does it feel? Oh my gosh, it is giant. Okay, we got a great big one. That would be why it feels giant. Nice. Absolutely choked on that Ned rig. Check that out. Gone. Let's see if I can get it gone. He wanted all of that. That was a first cast in there with that. So hopefully that's a good sign. We're gonna have to fix that bait. That's not a bad one though. I'd take a few more of them. All right, dude, we'll see ya. Let's see if there's another one down there with it. That's funny, I fished that swim bait through there multiple times. Wouldn't even touch it. First cast with the Ned rig, didn't even make it halfway back to the boat. Throw it back over there again, see if we can do it twice. Cause that was a nice fish. <sighs> That's winter fishing for you. Ideally, what would happen now is there'd be a million of them here, and if you present your bait properly, then you just catch and catch and catch, but we'll see. The way it's been going today, it's been like one fish here, one fish there, which usually is not the case. 
All right, had to take us a quick little lunch break there. I was getting hungry. But now we're back. We got two Ned rigs tied on and we're gonna try and approach these fish real slow. See what happens. We're gonna work our way up through here, hit some other spots. It seems like these fish really don't wanna move. Uh, considering the clues that I'm taking into account making my decision right here, I've caught one fish on a swim bait and it literally hit the bottom and it was on there as soon as it hit the bottom. So I was picking it up off the bottom. That was a small one. Then I caught one vertical jigging a blade bait. That one was slightly bigger and that fish was pretty much on the bottom because it did it was picking it up off the bottom as well. And then I caught the biggest one of the day dragging an ed rig real slow. And we haven't done a whole lot of that. So I think we're gonna try and drag this around pretty slow. See if we can get us some other bites. We just gotta figure out the secret. Then we'll be good to go. And hopefully the secret isn't keep getting stuck in these logs and wood and rocks. Making it impossible to fish. All right, we're just gonna go get this one. I'm not losing another one here already. Got one. Immediately, I shook it off that rock. He jumped all over it. He's just a little guy. But as soon as we slowed down with the Ned rig again, he crunched it. Maybe we'll fish pretty slow and see if we can get more. Just a little dude. Not big at all. Bye, buddy. But where? There's one. There's more. I know I keep saying that, but that was the first time we actually caught two fish off the same spot. So maybe there is actually some fish here. Maybe there's been fish in all the areas that we've fished so far that have been tapping at the swim bait. They just don't want the swim bait. They want something pulled really slowly on the bottom and do not want to move. Like I said, water temperature is 46 degrees. So, I mean, we're approaching like bottom of the bottom of when I'm catching fish out here. I usually do not catch them much colder than that. I've caught fish down in like the low 40s, but when it gets that cold, those fish really do not want to cooperate. They know winter's coming. They know it's time to just sit and relax and get back after it next year when the ice comes off. Although this is killing me. Every time I find a fish, I get hung up. There's one. I think we got us something figured out. He's not giant, but he smoked it. Come here, buddy. Hi, dude. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Hey, 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 hey. Don't do that. Just a little guy. But first cast right back in there as soon as I got rigged up. So we might be on to a little something. We'll see. I'm gonna try and put the pieces together. So here's a little tidbit of information for you. That jig head is two sizes lighter than what I was just fishing with. I kept getting hung up and I was tired of getting hung up. And one thing I always do when I get hung up a lot is downsize my jig head because if you're getting hung up that much, it's because your bait's burying into stuff rather than gliding over it. So I went two sizes down and got bit immediately and didn't get hung up. So fingers crossed we don't get hung up anymore and we might have figured something out and we can keep our bait above the rocks and where the fish can get it. The other interesting thing I've noticed right here in this area, especially where I'm sitting right now, there's a pile of leaves right here that are not moving, which means there's no current there. 
and I'm throwing my bait right off the tip of this little point here where the current's coming. So they should be sitting right on that line, like literally pretty much exactly where that fish was would be where I would expect one to be because it gives them a place that they can sit out of the current but also wait for food to come by. So, makes sense. Go figure, it stopped recording as soon as I hook a fish. I saw one swimming on my graph, they were all over the place in here, and I'm like, I can't get them to bite anything, and I could not figure out why. That's a nice fish. That's a really nice fish, might be the biggest one so far. We've gone like hours without a bite, and I finally just pitched my bait over at this fish, and he swam over there and grabbed it. Got you, buddy. That's a good one. I would take some more of them. It's been so slow today and I can't figure out why. I just, I don't get, I don't get it. But look at that fish. Beautiful little smallmouth. Little, not really the right word for it. That's a nice fish. We're gonna throw heading back. We're gonna try and catch us some more. Another Ned Rig fish, we're gonna keep picking them off, I guess. I'm just looking for rock piles and then pitching my bait at it, and that's been the ticket so far. And if I get it in front of one, they bite it, but I have to work for them. What I really wanna know is how many times that happens to YouTubers. I literally had the exact perfect cast, perfect hook set. I set the hook, I turn around, and the camera's not recording. I wanna know how many times that happens. It happens to me a lot. It's annoying. Um, I guess, so Canon cameras, if anybody's curious, they only let you record for 30 minutes and then it stops your recording and then you have to start another one. So I try to keep track of 30 minutes and run back there and restart the camera. And uh, I missed it on that one. Maybe we'll catch another one though. I couldn't believe that. I was watching them swim all over the graph. I was getting so frustrated. I'm like, there's a thousand fish down there. How am I not getting a bite? And as soon as I said that, I got bit. And if I had to guess, the way today's been going, it'll probably be the only bite I get off this spot. But we're gonna try anyway. Because there was more than one down there. I saw them. Found the boulder. Been a lot of finding boulders today. We'll just go get that one and keep on going. I'm just gonna keep working my way down this bank on the trolling motor. It seems like every time I find a rock, there's a fish on it. But there's only one, so I might as well just keep moving because there's no point to stay in the same spot. Usually what I try to do with these smallmouth is find an area that they're in and pick it apart and like really work those fish and try and get as many bites as I can, but I can't do that today for whatever reason. They're just, I don't know if they're not ganged up like that or my actual guess is that they're there just once they get hooked they kind of scatter or do something but they go away or stop biting come on it's like right there what are you stuck on Let's hope this hook bends out. Nope, it broke. Like I said, we're showing everything in these day on the water videos. All the struggles. There's been a lot of them today. That's okay. We've caught a few nice fish. Get them to pull on the rod a little bit. I was actually just thinking about how much longer I was gonna stay before calling it quits. And go figure one bites, that's how it always goes. That's like the one last cast thing. Oh, just give me one more cast. And as soon as you say that, you'll catch a fish because then you'll want to stay for another hour. I mean, I legitimately haven't had a bite for probably three hours, if I had to guess.
And then all of a sudden, one just pops up and bites. There's a nice boulder. Let's see if we can make this happen. Don't think that was close enough. Actually, it was spot on. Look at me go. Probably will not get a bite though. Unless the rock that I'm finding, if it's like a massive boulder, there's a chance there's a fish on it. But if it's just a small rock, there needs to be more than one. There needs to be like a big pile of rubble or something there to keep them on it, it seems like. Doesn't work if there's just like a couple of rocks or a single, single little boulder sitting there. Oop, there's a nice boulder. That one looks good. That one looks real good. That could have some fish on it. It does have fish on it. Look at that. We might have something going. It feels like another big one. It feels like a really big one. Unless he's just fighting really hard. I'm gonna loosen my drag before I get him up here and he takes off. That's a decent fish. Now we're starting to catch some. It's taken all day to figure them out. As soon as you find that big boulder, they just sitting right on it. Come here, dude. Look at that. It's another good nice fish. Gotta fix my Ned rig up there. He got me all crooked. Nice small mouth. Probably a two and a half pounder. Decent fish. We're gonna throw him back and get us some more. Let's see if we can catch two off this rock pile because he hit it on the first cast on there. They've been messing up my Ned rig though. It's not that bad. That's the deal right there. If I can get it to focus. That's the deal. Green pumpkin goby net rig. Hand forward head. There we go. Got that one. Can't tell if he's big or not. I'm gonna say yes. Eh, he's not bad. He's not bad. Little weak jump. Literally the second I flipped it in the boat. I, I can't get, catch a break. 30 minutes, every 30 minutes I'm getting a bite and the camera's not recording. Not a bad one. Maybe two pounds if I'm lucky, but another one in the boat. While it's been tough, I'm, I'm getting there, starting to catch some. See you, buddy. Let's see if there's another one in there. Can we finally catch two off one spot? I'm seeing them all over the graph again here too. Every time that I pull up on one of these like rocky ledges, you can see them all just swimming and sc scooting along the bottom, but they won't touch anything. They're very difficult to get to bite. That one again, cast it out there, hit the bottom, sat there for like two seconds and then, oh, I thought I had two in a row. Come on, I don't want to go ruin that spot. I just caught a fish off of it. Broke. Uh, I cannot catch a break today. That's my only complaint for today. 
I cannot catch a break. As soon as I catch a fish, I either get snagged or the camera turns off. One of the two. I have another Ned rig here. Let's just throw this out there to see what happens. Because I don't want to retie quite yet. There's got to be more fish on that. There's no way that's the only one. There's a big rock. Let's see if there's one home on this one. The answer is yes. It's every giant boulder has a fish on it. But that'll probably be the only one I catch off of it. Like, I didn't even have to do anything. It landed on the bottom, had a fish on it. I love when the floor carbon does the little noise going around in circles like that. It's hilarious. Oh, he's just a little guy. Maybe there will be more since he's just a little baby. I don't know. Not a big one. Felt nice to reel one in though. Definitely figured a little something out at this point. Definitely figured a little something out by now. We're catching them consistently. Size could be a little bit better. Numbers could definitely be better, but I don't know. I don't know what it is, why there's only so many fish on certain spots. I'm convinced that it is as soon as one gets caught, they know what's up and they stop biting. As much, I'm like the only boat out here today. This is usually a pretty popular fishing location. Uh, so I have a feeling these fish get hit pretty hard and people know where they live. So once one bites, they kind of all just shut down. So they all don't get hooked. Fishing pressure can do that sometimes. But you never know. I don't, I don't know why they're not biting. There's gotta be more than one. There's no way there's just one on each one of these rocks. That I refuse to believe. Why they're not biting, couldn't answer that one. Could be numerous things. Fish are fish at the end of the day. They're gonna bite if they want to, and if they don't want to, they're not going to. Oh. I can't tell you my least favorite part about fall and winter bass fishing is having to wear rain gear and 19 layers of clothing all day. My back kills me by the end of the day. But it's worth it for that. That feels like a large one. Ha, hilarious. Wait till you see the size of this one. It feels like a large one, he says. Ha, 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 ha. Uh. He's tiny. Goodbye. Yeah, I don't know who can come out here and fish in this many layers of clothing and not have their back hurting by the end of the day. I like fishing in the summer where I can just wear shorts and flip-flops and be relaxed. But then again, summer fishing does not even come close to this time of year. We do, if the weather turns out nice next weekend, this is the weekend before Thanksgiving, if anybody's curious. Um, if the weather decides to play nice and hold up for next weekend, we're going to Lake Erie and I'm gonna try and catch a fish that's been on my bucket list for a long, long time. So that'll be a very, very exciting video. Uh, I really hope we can get up there and do that. Obviously, it depends on the wind because you can't go on Lake Erie if there's 13 foot waves out there, but We're gonna try and get out there and catch them And then from there we'll be 
maybe doing a little bit more bass fishing if the weather plays nice. If not, we'll be hitting up some steelhead for a few weeks and heading to Florida. Try and do some videos down there. I might as well just move. I caught my fish. All I end up catching after the first one is snags, like that. We'll just go get it and move on. If they're so predictable. I will say it's a pattern, but it's not my favorite pattern. Not really where I wanted that to go, but throw it over there. Okay, not where I wanted it to go, ended up being a fish. Come on, dude. You're just a little guy. It's actually not a bad fish, but compared to what I thought I'd be catching today, he's just a little guy. Little baby. There he is. See you, dude. Let's lighten you up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Might as well throw it back over there. No, well, that's not where I wanted it to go either. Watch me catch one on that. I'll just start casting in the middle of the river. No way. That's crazy. That's crazy. A little fatty. Not bad. I mean, I feel like I should just cast in the middle of the river because I just said if I catch one on that because I didn't... <laughs> Didn't go where I wanted it to go. I should just cast in the middle of the river, but I'm gonna throw back over there. We caught two in a row. Finally. Let's see if we can get a third one. We're learning. I would be completely honest with you, this is my favorite part of fishing. Like, I love going out, not knowing what to expect, and figuring them out. I 100% thought I was going to come out here and catch them on a swim bait and do all kinds of stuff and catch piles of fish behind rock piles and stuff. Didn't happen. And instead of giving up, you just keep trying different things until you figure out what they're doing. And when it comes together, like, it, there's no better feeling than when you finally put all the puzzle pieces together and start catching fish. There we go. We got one. Took long enough. We had quite a little lull right there. Come here, dude. Alrighty. We are quickly running out of daylight. I don't even know if you can see me right now. Let's try and get over here. Turn this up just a little bit so you can see what's going on. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and the change of pace on like a on the water video and basically breaking down my day on the water. That's another nice one right there. We had a heck of a day out here. Hope you guys enjoyed me bringing you along like you're my co-angler fishing in the boat with me. If you like this video, let me know down below. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching. Check this one out right here if you want to see how to rig that Ned rig up and catch fish just like this. See you, dude.